the good news is this is the last talk. The bad news is while, while we are talking a lot about these 2D complexities, 2D modelings, uh, I will talk a little bit about 3D. Although, although there are already several talks in the past few days about uh, 3D CFD models, and uh, they, they gave a very, very good state of the art and uh, talks. They, they are very good, and uh, so hopefully my talk will not be a, as entertaining as uh, Kevin did, but hopefully I will give you some probably new information you probably have never heard of. But before that, I do want to make a comment, and I did not know before I came here that actually there are also a lot of interests here about the coastal issues. And I just want to let you know, actually currently I'm spending time working on extending SRH 2D model to coastal simulation also. So my estimate is uh, hopefully next conference in two years, I will be able to share that results. And uh, so in the future, you don't need, hopefully, you don't need to switch around the two different models, okay? And, and the, this effort, of course, is, uh, is uh, for me, is uh, funded by a, another agency, so it's kind of uh, committed to it. So just let you know. So if you have this need in the future and it's coming. Okay, so here my talk, I will share with you another passion I had over many years, almost 30 years, that is to develop a 3D CFD model which is easy to use for engineers like you and myself. And I myself, although I'm a model developer, but I hate to use any models which are difficult, okay? I don't want to use it. So, so even my phone, you know, uh, uh, still first generation Note. Uh, uh, and and uh, my kids already moved on Note 9, I think, right now. So I don't know how to use a lot of apps on there. So thank, thanks God he pushed me into uh, renting that scooter. And uh, I didn't do it the first time because I just don't want to download the app and do those things. I, I'm, I'm a lazy, lay engineer. And, uh, but last night I tried, I, I enjoyed it. That's very good, okay. So I will quickly go through, uh, give you an introduction. And what's the purpose, what's the objective of this effort? And uh, then I'll uh, say a few words about the strategies I adopted and uh, give you an update on what what has been done so far, and also say something about what's coming okay, in this area. So first of all, we, we have, as engineers, we have used 1D models for many, many years. And 15 years ago, I joined the reclamation. I told them, why not a 2D? And most people laughed at me. And they, no one wants to fund it. And I got two projects, very high profile projects at Reclamation we need to work on. One dam removal at Elwa. Another project on the Dungeness River is coastal issues. And uh, I told them I will not use 1D. Because if I use it, I will not trust myself. So actually, I went ahead and developed a 2D model for those two projects. That's how SRH2D started. So even before Federal Highway adopted SRH2D, 2D model modeling has already been a standard practice, at least at, at, least at the Technical Service Center of Reclamation. So it has been around for a while, and uh, we, we, we develop it primarily for engineering applications. Reclamation is counted as an uh, engineering agency. We have zero budget for research. So, so it's developed for projects. So now Scott is pushing, as you know, he's pushing for change, okay? change the 2D model, and I 
am 100% behind it because I know 15 years ago, I told my boss, 2D model is the way to go, it's going to happen. No matter you do it or not. So I, I'm going to do it anyway. So, so I think Scott is pushing it. I hope everyone start to jump into it. Now I'm going to switch to how about 3D? <laughs> uh, when we still have difficulty convincing people to use 2D, I started to look forward to, I don't know, 15 years from now. Hopefully at that time I'm still around. 3D modeling. And what about this? I know several talks already have been given in this conference. And I, I, I remember yesterday when Kevin talked about 3D models. And I did hear a few people sitting behind me. I hear their comments like, wow, it's cool. See if it is cool. But, yeah. so what's the challenge? First of all, mo the but part, including, is too difficult to use. And of course, there are commercial CFD softwares. I myself, actually myself, <laughs> 20 years ago, I developed a 3D model, which became a commercial code. After that, I quit my job. Okay? And I say, no, I, I'm not into these custom supporters. You know. Once it becomes commercialized, and my everyday job is to answer questions, this didn't work. That doesn't work. I said, no, I quit. It's not my job. So it is, I don't know now and how difficult it is, but most people told me it's still very difficult to use. I myself actually spent quite some time also trying to use an open phone because I don't want to pay $10,000, $20,000, even $30,000 license to buy a CFD software, which is still difficult to use. And I only use, use it, let's say, once a year. I'm not going to do that. But open phone is free. So I did spend time looking into it and using it. And uh, I agree, it's too difficult to use. I developed my own you know, 3D usage manual for myself, and uh, I still forget about it. So too difficult. And another thing is a full-time job. I don't think any agency can afford to have an engineer doing purely for 3D modeling for your project. As an engineer, we work on so many other things. And already, I have to learn so many software. I don't want to add another one, which is difficult to use. The second issue with 3D model is, of course, is labor intensive. If you think 2D mesh generation is difficult, I can tell you 3D mesh generation is a nightmare. Okay. So the third thing, of course, you heard of it, to do a decent CFD modeling, you, you need to have access to cluster of what, whatever. Okay, I'm not a fan of that also. And uh, I want to have something which can be done on this desktop. Okay, so all these are the issues. And uh, I will not be able to solve all of these, but I do embark on an effort to develop a CFD model which you can Hopefully, it's the difficulty of usage is the same as SH2D. So this gives you another motivation to use SH2D. If you know how to run SH2D, you will, be know, you will know how to run the CFD model I'm going to talk to you. Okay. In terms of labor intensive part, this is a difficult area. So actually, I spent several years already Hopefully, the message generation part is also similar to SMS 2D message generation. Okay. The third part, I don't know yet. Okay. But I do have a demonstra demonstration cases showing you I got those results from my desktop PC. Okay. So I will quickly skip this. And actually, 15 years ago, when I was employed at University of 
University of Iowa. I'm already on 3D CFD modeling. And uh, this is just one example, you know, at the hydropower dam uh, on the Columbia River. We want to study fish passage issue. And uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah. So we built some fish behavioral guidance structures. The hope is we will modify the local flow hydrodynamics so that fish can be encouraged to go to certain areas so that we can collect it. Okay? So at that time, about 20 years ago, we worked on, on it. And And we have to gener generate the mesh first, which of course I looked into that software. I said, no, I'm not going to learn this. So we hired a postdoc. He spent six months on it, generated this mesh for me. Then I did a simulation. Okay. So I never have learned any mesh generation software. Too expensive, too labor intensive. But for that project, we have one year project. We did it anyway, but it's, it's not fun, okay? But we are able to do it 20 years ago. Did I push the wrong button? Okay. And another project, in, I worked on many projects, just showing some interesting projects I worked on. Another project is at Quad City. Uh, it's a nuclear power plant uh, discharge, thermal discharge. About 30 diffusers, they inject hot, uh, water near the bottom of the river, and they want to study the effect of it, how to redistribute it, so that they can get a permit, basically, the thermal. Now, in terms of CFD, at that time, it's a really a challenge, because you have to mesh all 30 diffusers, which is certain geometry, certain angle, then you have to couple, put them together with the river. Well, we did it. And again, the mesh generation itself took, I forgot, many months. Okay. That's 20 years ago. Yeah, we are able to use CFD to optimize it so that it's thermal, you know, very uniform. And all, each, if you look at each jet, we will be able to simulate. So we can do it even 20 years ago. By the way, we did this at that time. It's a workstation called SGI. That's the best workstation I ever used. I, I was at Iowa for five years. That I always keep the workstation open. It never crashed a single time. But unfortunately, it's out of business. OK. So nowadays, a few years ago at the reclamation, people come to me and say, hey, we, did, we, we work on so many log jams with the word. We want to understand the flow dynamics uh, and the scour issues. Can you simulate that? Look at it. I said, whoa, it's hard, but let's make a try. So can we do that? Okay. So that's the objective of this effort. I've, it has been going on for many years, actually. So today, what I want to share with you is I call it a sample. Sample. So it's an acronym for semi-automatic modeling procedure for lay engineer, okay? If you are like me, I don't want to, again, I don't want to use, you know, I don't consider myself as an expert engineer. I want to lay back, be able to do wonderful things, okay? And uh, this procedure, hopefully following this procedure, 3D model, hopefully is easy to use. You can do it on your desktop, and it's free. You don't pay $20,000 license. So that's what I want to share with you. OK, here's the strategy. For our river engineering modeling, we know how to generate a 2D mesh for the string. Okay. You do it. Then you do an SRH 2D simulation to, to get the water surface elevation. Okay? And uh, if, if in the river reach, 
you have any in-string structures, that's usually it happens, because if there's no in-string structures, SRG2D is good enough. Okay? The reason we want to use a 3D is you have more complex stuff you put into the river, you want to know what's going on. Okay? Then for those structures, you scan it. 20 years ago, it was not possible. But nowadays, it's not that difficult anymore to scan these structures into a CAD system, and uh, then you can use it. Okay? Then, then, then hopefully, you don't have to know what has been done, but we have a tool which we take 2D mesh with better elevation, and the SRH2D results with what surface elevation, and also the scanning geometry put into the river, take this information, the tool will generate a 3D mesh for you automatically. Okay. Once you have the mesh, then hopefully the 3D model is as stable or as simple to use as SRG2D. You just hit the button, the CFD model gives you results. Okay. That's, that's the thinking, okay. that's the procedure. So does it work? Okay, I will show you one demonstration case I worked on. This is a, a, a we just ra randomly, we cut some trees, uh, I think eight pieces, and uh, we randomly, uh, maybe not randomly, someone else did it, uh, uh, did, you know, put them together, okay? And of course nailed it together so that, we, so that we can lift it and put it into a room which, by the way, was done at uh, Vicksburg, uh, Mississippi, Army Corps of Engineers. They are collaborating with me on this effort. And uh, so they did the physical modeling study of this because I told them, I can always go ahead and do a CFD modeling of something, but people will not believe it. Okay? I, I can display beautiful pictures, but they could be totally wrong. So if we really wanted to do something, let's do something we can verify. So that's the collaboration. You know, Army Corps did the physical modeling. I did this CFD effort and put into, we, we, we did some measurement so that we can, 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 we can compare. So the procedure. This is, to me, is a relatively simple, simple case. So that's why this is the first case I did a demonstration. Why? 2D mesh is just like that. I did it in two minutes, okay? And if you do a SRG2D modeling of this, it's too boring. So I decided, nah, I'm not going to do it. I will assume the water surface elevation just constant, okay? So I don't need to do that. But if you want to do a SRG2D modeling, it's fine. It may maybe, for me, it's only also take a few minutes. This can be done. Now this is the difficult part. So when this structure we, you know, we, we, we put it there, of course we took a 3D scanner, we scanned it, okay? So this is the picture. This is a scanning image. And of course uh, uh, the, core, uh, the engineer at the reclamation took this scanned image. He did need to clean up a little bit because some of nasty roots he, he, he took it out and created this, this cleaned up image, uh, uh, CAD system, and stored it. And that's, it's time for me to, to put into action, okay? I have these three pieces of information, and then I will do a 3D mesh generation, okay? For 3D gener mesh generation itself, as I said, I want to be automatic. You know, I will not spend six months on it to create something around that tree, which probably is impossible 20 years ago, okay? So here's again the idea. That, oh, maybe I'll look at it here. The first step is 2D mesh I already have, right? So I can vertically extend it any way I want. The only thing I need to tell the program is, okay, I want to stack it. Uh, in terms of ev every one foot, okay. just say it, 
So I can stack these two D mesh vertically. That's very easy. It's automatic. Okay. And then, of course, you have to place your in-stream structure where you want it. So you can put it there. You can rotate it. So, so it gives you six degrees of freedom to, to orient, to place your structure into this new 3D mesh. Uh, okay, we, we call it background mesh. 2D mesh extended, it becomes a 3D background mesh. So you place the structure into this. Then, of course, you do need to put a few input parameters. Like, is there any location you want more mesh? Refine the mesh? How much refinement do you want? You know, the background mesh can be one foot, but near the tree, you really want, you know, one centimeter resolution. You specify it. Okay? Once that is done, hopefully the two will create something for you without crashing. Okay? Hopefully. That's what I did. Okay? So, so this is the actual uh, the room. We put the uh, engineer the log chain into it. And uh, in the computer, we have to orient it right, put it in, and uh, the mesh is generated automatically for you. Okay, that's the mesh. And uh, so, of course, you know there is a little bit of iteration. Initially, you know you you, know, you, you give like okay the resolution near the the the, the, the tree, then you look at it. Uh, it's not enough, you can refine it, okay? So there's a little bit of iteration, but at least the generation process itself is automatic, okay? So if you've got the mesh, then you do the solutions, okay? I will not get into detail. I do have a 3D models, as I said. Actually, I developed a 3D model right after my PhD you know, uh, program. That's about 20, I got my PhD in 90, so 28 years ago. Okay. Uh, and then at the University of Iowa, I refined this 3D model to a point it can accept any mesh, any weird looking shaped mesh, okay. make it very general. So that's why that those weird looking tree can be meshed with weird looking mesh and the software, the software can do it. Okay. So I did a simulation. Okay. I just if you show one picture, you know, uh, I, vertically, I cut two slides and look at the, I think it's a velocity around it. As you can see, blue means the low velocity, red means high velocity, so, so the flow goes this way, and you can see the wake, the wake, the flow behind this structure is very, very low velocity, and the flow, of course, push the two sides, okay? This is near the top, this is near the bottom, so you can look at it. Okay, the nice thing about the CFD model results is, is that here is the displacement of pressure distribution around this structure. If you know pressure distribution around the structure, you can do any force calculation you want. Okay, the moment, the drag, the lift, whatever you want. Okay, you, you can do it. So the CFD can do that, but of course the most important question is can I trust it? Yeah. So for this particular study, fortunately, we did some measurement. And first of all, if you remember, the free service, I, I just say it's flat. Okay? But with three, what, what, what people don't know is with a flat surface assumption, 3D models still give you the free surface elevation near the, free, uh, near the surface. Okay? And actually, that's exactly what I did. So, 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 so actually, it's not. You, you start with a flat, but the solution will tell you it's not a flat. So that's the comparison. Okay. The top one is see if this shows the, what surface elevation, the surface elevation looks like. The bottom one is based on measurement. But the measurement is only you know, on those black points. They compare pretty well. Except you know a few po one point here, one point here, but I'm not sure those two points are the correct measurement anyway. There's no physical reason why suddenly this has a high point, this is a low point, 
you know, could be outlier of the measurement, but overall, yeah, free surface, we can predict it. That's not a difficult part, and that's not an interesting part. What's difficult, of course, is velocity. So we also have a lot of velocity measurements, and uh, overall, CFD agrees with the measured velocity very well, which is not surprising to me, because this particular 3D CFD model has been validated against a lot of cases before this study, when I was at Iowa. So we published many, 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 many papers out of it. Okay? So actually, even 20 years ago, I boasted to people, if you did a physical, uh, physical modeling, and if I did 3D modeling, 3D CFD modeling of the same case, if they do not agree, I have 90% 90% confidence you did something wrong. And it happened twice at the University of Iowa. Okay? They went back, looked at that physical modeling again, and they messed, messed up some, uh, you know, when they construct, constructed the terrain, something's wrong. So they fixed it, then everything matched. Okay? So 3D CFD model is that good. Okay? But anyway, quickly, near the ending now, I see Scott stood up. <laughs> Share with you two other projects I'm going along this direction. The first is I had a real life project on the Sacramento River for fish passage issues. And anyway, bottom line, so we want to understand this is Sacramento River. This is the George and Strew. Uh, we don't want the fish to go to the George and Strew because if it goes through that, the survival rate is so low. And so, so we are trying to explore the structural, put some floating structures there to, to change the flow dynamics. Hopefully it became a fish barrier. Okay? So that's what I'm trying to study. It's a real project application, so I will put sample into action for real life. The previous one is just for fun, for publication. But the other direction I'm going is, hey, can I do some scour simulation with 3D? Okay, that's another uh, area I'm working on. I already completed a simple fun case, which I can publish again. It uh, flew around the diamond-shaped pier, which was uh, both f uh, measured and also see if it simulated before. Uh, I, sorry, I don't know how to, you know, the last name, how to say it. And uh, so I will get a quick, yeah, with this CFD model, and this again is very simple. You just put a rectangular 2D mesh, put, a, you know, the square, uh, peer into it, it's so easy to do. This mesh generation, I, I did it in one hour. Okay. And the simulation, so I can do, you know, you can look at it, you know, the from common street kind of eddy shading, you can predict it, but that's not what we want. What we want is this, okay. scour process from beginning to end. Okay. Again, I choose this lab case because we have data. Okay. This is the maximum, uh, maximum scour depth versus measured versus computed. And here is the uh, uh, equilibrium, scour comparison. Uh, the top must be, top is uh, CFD, bottom is measured. Half a half, you know, I want trying to compare it. But this is against for fun. And uh, my next hope is to collaborate with Federal Highway. I can do something for this case, okay? The, uh, this is a much, much complex case, and I'm not getting into it. So the mesh itself is outrageous. Okay. But anyway, so I will conclude my talk. Uh, I think a practical, practical CFD modeling is on the horizon for lay engineer. My hope is, I don't know when, hopefully just in a few years, hopefully I have the opportunity to give a training workshop here to teach you how to use this, okay? So you can play with a little bit and don't need to have access to supercomputer. And then the sample procedures described, it sounded simple, but of course a lot of hard work behind it. And so stay tuned, okay? So I will entertain any questions you may have. Actually, Yong, the boss tells me we have to wrap it up. Um, yeah, if, if, if you have questions for Yong, 
he probably will be around for a few minutes, but it uh, gives you a great idea as to where we're headed. But uh, um, I better turn it over. We have some closing remarks, but uh, thank you all for uh, attending this morning.